Now she has to teach us that, so we know that one too. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank Oh, 
Who's oh, gone? <laughs> but that's a good thing. You're supposed to be submissive wives. You're supposed to be. What y'all think of that, wives? Amen. Go ahead, wives. Didn't say it much more. I don't think my baby wives like that. <laughs> Another thing is she she really tries to to be available to assist as many people as possible. She loves people. She really does. She's a beautiful woman. She's a, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Mother Matthews. She's a beautiful woman beautiful. and she is sincere. When she yes. says something, yes. genuine, it comes from yes. her. You know the one, the one that she needs. Yes. That. No. If she said it to you, yes. that is genuine. She yes. means every word. You'll never get a catch her talking about you behind your back or saying this and that about you. Yes. She's not going to do it. She's going to talk to you before she goes yes. and talks to anybody else. So, she's also the number seven child of ten of us. And you know, somebody says seven is a lucky number, I don't know about that. It's a blessing. Yeah. But I do know, and I, I checked and I went to Google and I said, what does it mean? It says, finish, complete, divine perfection, fullness. If you're not there, you've got a lot to go for. Because that is what how God sees you. As his divine perfection, whole, finish, complete in him. Working on it every day. She's also a woman of God who seeks to do God's will and to see his purpose manifested in her life, in her family's life, and in the lives of all of the people that she passes, every one of us, her friends and also the people of our church. That's my sister, Pastor Mambo, and I'm very proud of her. Amen. Bless the Lord. Our second tribute will come from Abigail Daly. Come on, clap your hands as Abigail comes. Beautiful queen of God by the name of Abu Ramon and This beautiful queen so 
to a beautiful woman, an awesome jewel to the body of Christ, yes. to a queen yes. who is so deserving of all of the honor and all of the earthly glory that you can receive on today. It's your birthday. The Hinkles just wanted to send a great shout out to you to say that may God bless you, increase you, and forever favor you, favor you during this time and season of celebration. Yes, and many more. And we know that God is going to bless you and grace you yes. with uh, Pastor Victor doing a big dinner and giving you lots of money and then the family <laughs> showering you with plenty of gifts. So we're going to hear about it when we get over there. God bless you, bro. We got you back. Amen. God bless you and enjoy your day. Amen. Spend lots of money on her. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Bye -bye. We love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Today, I celebrate a very special, phenomenal, powerful, beautiful, and anointed woman of God. And that is you, Dr. Pastor Margot Victor. I celebrate you on this very special day, Amen. on the occasion of your birthday. Happy birthday to you, my dear friend and colleague in the gospel. I would like to say that in this new season of your life, that the favor of God surrounds you as a shield. Blessings are overtaking you. Wow. Happy, happy birthday. I love you. Wow, that was great. You should run for president. Yeah, I think I should. <laughs> well, actually, Prime Minister oh, Rest. 
of the Bahamas. <laughs> All right. And, and wow. And Pastor Eddie, you're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. Amen. Happy birthday, uh, Dr. Margot Victor. Amen. You're a great friend to many people, and we consider you a close friend. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay. Good morning, Dr. Margo. Good afternoon. Don't know when you're going to receive this message, but I was told by a special someone that you are going to be celebrating your big day on Sunday with your church family. So we would like to share with you something that I put together to give you a word of encouragement. And it states, life by itself is a gift. So never forget to thank God for it. Moreover, never forget to make the most of it. Each one of us is special in his sight. May you feel him watching over you with love and affection, not just on your special day, but always. God made you unique. God give you talents and gifts. And most importantly, he give you his love and salvation. May you be blessed this day and throughout your life. May God bless you with abundant peace and joy. Happy birthday to you on behalf of Supernatural Impact Christian Center and our Virtuous Woman Ministry. We love you. Looking forward to our fellowship next year at our First Woman Conference. And before I go, I want to leave with you a scripture that came to mind. Psalms 20 verse 4. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. God bless. Love you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Now coming forth to give us our special selection this morning for Pastor Margo and none other than Mother Elizabeth Fowler. Come on, give, give a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. This is the old time psalmist. So I know we're going to have a great selection right now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's bless the Lord this morning. Come on and bless the Lord this morning. Y'all sound so good.
thank the Lord for another milestone in her life. You know, it's key and important to give people their flowers while they're alive. Yes. You know, a lot of times we go to these funerals, two, three, four hours, five hours. The person can't hear what you say. They can't hear nothing. So we didn't do anything while they're alive. They're not going to hear it then. So I thank God for the opportunity that we can say to Pastor Marco, we love you, we can do our tributes. And then we should do it, you know, as the Lord leads us to even wait for a birthday. You know, the saints of God, sometimes we wait for a pastoral day, we wait for birthdays. When the Lord put it in you to do something, do it. Because that's the time when you're more blessed. And then you don't have to wait until everybody else is doing something. So that's just a hint to the wise, what God has given you. Um, we have to give one of our money. It's due. I call it a privilege to be before you this morning and bring you greetings on behalf of my husband, Mr. Patterson Williams. He said he would have loved, loved to be here. He even thought of coming after, but he has a 3 o'clock engagement. And then 6.30 this evening, we have a special um, going on with the young girls, a speech tonight at the church. So a lot is going on today. But when I said, call me, I said, it's only once a year that we have a birthday. And then also, Pastor Lord has drawn Pastor Margo and I um, closer, not just in the flesh, but in the natural. There's a bond God has brought with a, um, a few pastors, wives, and spouses that the Lord, has, the work he has begun. And as I began to seek him, when he called me, and I said to my husband, I have to be released today, he said, that is part of the work that the Lord is doing. That I and Shaq and I, that we are here with each other, Amen. and to encourage each other. I thank God for the two young ladies that came along with me. That's the one who's taking all the pictures. Okay. We're going to go out pictures soon and be hearing the word and all this in Georgia. Both of you can just stand. I honor them this morning. The Lord for all.
um, for young girls to really buy into. Because, you know, the book is thick. They don't have time to read. Everything is yeah. home. Mm -hmm. They don't have time to read. So the Lord's making like a booklet. You know, when mothers have been purchasing them for their daughters and grandchildren, just to give it to them to read, how to adorn themselves. So I brought a few of them with me. It's for a small fee, printing fee, I call it about $5 if you desire at the end of the service. But I want to get into the word of the Lord. The Lord dropped into my spirit as I seek him. Lord, what is the word for the people today? And the Lord took me to the book of First Kings chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17. You know, even as Pastor Margo celebrates today, a lot of people don't like to say their age and whatever. Listen, as you get older in the Lord, you are like wine. Let me, let me give a tip to those who always think that they're getting old. You're getting old. You are getting like wine. You're getting wiser. Yes. And you're getting more valuable. Yes. So don't let people say, oh, get no way. Listen. No, it's not. The true you is that eagle anyhow. Amen. That's day by day. Amen. That will send the question anyhow. Amen. Because God has truly blessed us. Because all of us know what we are looking at him to the dust. What? Amen. That new man? Right. Let's talk about it more. Right. Let's yes. emphasize on it more. Let's yes. talk about that new man, that creator, that picture in you, the hope in you, that treasure. Yes. That is what we need to be talking Amen. about more. Amen. So, in 1 Kings chapter 17, First Kings chapter 17, I should use for theme God's favor in the midst of famine. Yeah. I'm going to say that slow. The Lord, as I was seeking the Lord, spending time with Him in this message, the Lord said, Many, many of us, we need to hear this word today. Even as I was in studies with it, I said, Lord, bless me to hear it first. Yes. God's favor. In the midst of famine. Farming means scarcity of anything that is needed to live. Whether it's money, whether it's food, and whether it's health. We know today that we know about the fact, we know about everything going up, we know the food going up, and a lot of people's income are staying where it is. You know that times you go to the supermarket, I don't know what you do, it looks like the shelves are empty. Somebody is only 15 minutes in here. Mm -hmm. I would hear them, but yeah, I would hear God. Mm -hmm. People, what you see with these two eyes isn't always what's going on in your environment. That's right. You have to be seeking God. Yeah, that's very good. Sometimes you go into the supermarket, like I said, and the guy would say, oh, the container isn't here yet. God says, your provision has nothing to do with the container is not in here. My God. Right. My God. Hallelujah. Right. We see it and look, it look empty. The shells could be full and it still could be a farming. You have to listen True. to God. Amen. Even health. People are fighting to live. Hmm. Some people have to exercise. Now some of us have nothing to do with our weight because you can be small. But the doctor's order is you have to exercise every day. People are fighting just to live. Yeah. It's a famine in the body. Oh People take supplement because you have to. Nothing happens in the food. Okay. Right. You're looking at lettuce and it's white. It should be green. Mm -hmm. That's good. So many people during Thanksgiving time, I don't know the joy. I have a lot of family in that store talking to them. A lot of people who sick last Thanksgiving. The turkey snapped. Yes. Yes. Now you know they say chicken and turkey. You even now, if I should plug in and just walk into my spirit, make sure you sanctify your turkey yes, right. before you eat it. Scripture says no dead anything should come to you, but you have to sanctify everything you eat with the thought of the turkey just came in my spirit. Okay. Turkey poisoned so many people in that store was sick after Thanksgiving dinner. This past November. There is 
a problem. So many people take medication to sleep, and a lot of people take it to wake up. There is a problem in the body. What I'm saying today isn't something that I just made up. The Lord spoke, and I said, Lord, I'm going to hear you first with this word before the people even hear you. So I'm hearing it again even as I speak. Farming can also be called a time of testing. Sometimes farming comes on the family. A farming can come on you individually, and then a farming can come to the island, and then a farming can come to the Bahamas. And then the farmer can come to your nation. Yes. But today I come with good news, and that's why we are going to the book of Kings, chapter 17. And it reads, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gil Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. I know we've heard this story many times. I'm not, I'm not going to go into it word for word, but I'm going to speak as the function of the Holy Spirit. I have heard the story so many times. And most of us are familiar with it. Ahab was a king, and his wife's name was Jezebel. The Israelites were so wicked. You know what concerns me, and it and even concerning me in my environment that I live in the Bahamas? When people continue to do evil, that's a serious thing. Oh, yeah. hmm. When God began to say, don't go east, but go west, and all the people go east, that's a serious judgment. Oh, yes. 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 So when we begin to talk about all the warehouse and the gambling, and the Lord is saying, don't do it, and we do it. It may take a week, it may take a month, it may take a year, it may take years, it may take decades, but God will judge. Don't ever do something against the will of God. Amen. But what happened was Israel sinned. Her husband was a wicked king. Nothing like when you have a wicked husband and a wicked wife. If one is wicked, the other one can say, honey, don't do that. God can judge us. But Jezebel was wicked. And the time came when God began to speak to me, Elijah, and he said, go and warn the king and tell him a famine, not just a famine, we just say it was severe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. See, when a storm passed through an island and nobody get nothing damage, that's fine. Hmm. Then the Lord sent storms and a bunch of damage. Storm came and he killed no one. It's getting deeper, it's getting stronger. Uh -huh. Hear the voice of the Lord when, a, when the voice of a prophet, man, woman, boy, or child, speaks to a nation, come to your family. From a, as a child, I have heard people say in the church where my dad used to pastor that the Lord, my dad was a pastor all my life in the John Church. And those people used to be prophetic, but maybe how we think they were. And they, the old ladies used to come to the church testify saying, the Lord tell me to go to sister so and so house and warn them and tell them ABC. You didn't get to that woman and I watched it as a child, the destruction of my family. The Lord always warned. That's true. That's yeah. So a warning came to Israel through Elijah and said, God says not going to win. Not a due. Yes. And he went and he spoke to the king. The king Practice wickedness. They have sinned. They have worshipped Baal. See, you may, you may say, oh, the Bahamians don't worship Baal. Your message is coming home. You're not dealing with the Florida people and the Canada people. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay with this message. Okay. You, a lot of people may not be worshipping Baal. But people are worshipping. I mean, they can't wait till morning come to buy a number. Okay. People who yeah. save and we save. Uh, a lot of them just mix up. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, yes. right. And I'm not talking with these eyes, see, I'm talking with the Spirit is revealing. See, when the Spirit reveals something, that has nothing to do with what you see. Because no. the person may say, I don't know that, I don't know that, but the Spirit knows it. Yeah. So the Lord is saying, some people cannot, including some of my people, they have lost confidence in my word. Yeah. Now, see, we say, oh, Jezebel, she gone and she had this call, the prophet went and they raised up the dead. 
Many people may not go into green now, but the spirit of rebellion has come over the Bahamas so much, and they've lost confidence in God. They cannot wait till the morning come to get up to just, just, just get a number to see if, 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 if my fall. My God, that's right. You know the place they go in and it's called if, if my fall or what fall. But I encourage you with good words today, people of God. Put your confidence in God. The favor of God will be upon you at night, right in the midst of any famine. Good news to you today. God will take care of you. Do not put another God in the front of our awesome God. Just because you think He cannot come through today. So tomorrow you say, I can get another God. I can buy a number. I go into something of a soul. You are the right spirit in your life. Yes, yes, yes. So today deliverance has come. Not to bash you, but a spirit of forgiveness to God today. To hear what he is saying. God said, I am your provider. So Elijah went and he warned the king. And told him what God had said. As the Lord God of Israel lived before whom I stand. In other words, he's saying, King, I come to tell you what God said. As sure we say as many of as night for a day, it will not rain in this place. I am telling you what God says. And he delivered what God said. When the Lord gave you a message to someone, people of God deliver it. Sometimes we want it to sound pretty. We say one mind tell me. We say we can wait. But someone in here needs to deliver that word. Amen. That God is putting in you today. So when he delivered that word, he said, as the Lord said, it will not rain. The Lord sent a severe famine. It's important to follow the instruction. Yes. When you are in a test, yes. it's important to follow every lead of that test. Amen. Your prayer life needs to be faithful, and you need clear directions when you're going through a season or a test of famine. Yes. Everyone can be blessed around you, you know, and it's just you going through that. Yes. It could be your test. So when you are going through your time of famine, you don't need to feel bad. You don't need to be pitiful because you know the Lord is permitting it. That's right. And what the Lord does, he hides you. You see what happened to Elijah? Verse 3 tells us that the Lord says in verse 3, Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. Now, when we are going through tests, the Lord gives us instruction, the Lord says go to eastward. Sometimes you will go eastward, and you know eastward don't look too good. Don't I go in west? Your blessing is right where you don't think it is. It don't never look, in many cases, it don't never look like it's gone. That's <laughs> true. I'm telling you, I've been in situations long enough to know that sometimes when God speaks, it don't look like it. And when other people come and tell us, listen, let me tell you what I think is best. Listen, just say, get the hands behind me. Say, right. If God is sending you east, it don't matter what you can say, go yes. west. That's now, right. some of us will go west, fetch hell, and then I'll go back east. Because we did not hear east. We went because they say it looks bad. Yeah. But Elijah did not listen to no one, as you can see right in the world. Mm. Verse 4 said, and it shall be. And thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee. Amen. When the Lord has you going through your famine, He will prepare. Well, we call it we call it backup, but it's not always a backup. Hmm. It's the Lord provision. Amen. The Lord specifically gave Elijah instruction, and you know what He said? I have commanded. You know what command means? Hmm. Command means to appoint. To ordain or to order something. Yeah. When we speak, we say, I command you, say, we order them, we tell them, go. So the Lord commanded and willed them. God is about to command something on someone behind who will believe him today. Now, see, the Lord commanded the raven. Who do you need God to command in your life? Do you need God to command that person to bring him in order? You don't do it because you want me to mess around. Yeah. Do you need God to bring that spouse in order, those children? Yes. That boss who's talking to you like a child? That boss who don't want to give you what you know you deserve? He commands the raven. But who is your raven today? We are 
we're living the word of God in our lives today. Who is your raven today? The Lord commanded the raven. He appointed him. He ordained him. Plenty of ravens are there, but he appointed one. Verse 5 says, So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt at the brook Cherub, and it, it was before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Saints of God, the Lord will provide no matter what's going on around you. Yes. Yes. Amen. We know how Grandma has been for the last 15 years. Look how God has been providing. Yes. Yes. But you still have some people who are grumbling and complaining. I want us to know that God is with us in the midst. In the midst of Grand Ahama, let me tell you something. God is with us. Yes, yes. But you have, to, you have to see him in it. Yes. Because sometimes, because of every day is not the same, you are saying that God must believe me. Be careful of what you're saying while you're going to That's yes, true. Amen. He has not left you. He has not forsaken you. Your blessing is at the brook cherry and not where your family is telling you to go. So some of you need to go find the brook. Some of you already passed the brook, but you say that look too bad. That ain't that it right there. It's right in that same person who you say it can't happen to away. Sometimes God will bless you. Somebody will bless you the least person you expect. That's happened to me two weeks ago. I walked into an establishment and walked out. I said, oh my God. I never thought this person would even give to me. You look into people you're expecting from. God will never look how we look. That's it's true. never the familiar walk. Don't your enemy. I mean, they didn't give me a check. They turn back your enemy. But for the moment, they were anointed for God. And he anointed the red Just to be Elijah. God will anoint someone just for a day. Just to do and to release in your life what he yeah, said and right. send them back home. Right. He used the donkey, but what he needed, the donkey go and be a donkey. That's right. God will use circumstances, person, situation, you will never think he will do. Yes. Because he don't think like us. Yes. His thoughts as far as the east is from the west. The blessing came through the raven. Mm. For a moment, I want to let you know a little of the raven birds. They are one of the most intelligent birds in the bird family. I think it was a raven that bought the leaf back after the ark. That raven bought a green leaf in the peak. That raven was so intelligent to know that the storm has passed and I'm sent on a sign uh -huh. to bring word back to Noah to know that the storm is over. Every bird is not intelligent. But the raven, the Lord chose a raven. He could have, I said to myself, if I was Elijah, you know, I'd probably like say if I was, why did we choose an eagle to feed me? Uh -huh. No, it, it is, it's it never factor, it's never how we think. Because I've been, we sit, we think, we sit, we get the calculator, we try to add up. Listen, throw that calculator on the side. If God tells you to do something, do it, make it enough money, know how. You need to step out in faith. Be added up on the calculator. And listen, to someone, your salary not going to make you wealthy. It's not going to happen in the salary. Right. No. It's not going to happen in the salary. No. It is submitting things to the Lord. Yes. Yes. Amen. Let the Lord be your raven. The Lord will anoint what he called you to do. Yes. He anointed the raven. Amen. I mean, what kind of bird, what, 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 what kind of raven? raven? I understand even this eat their things. Yes. Yes. So the Lord chooses avenues sometimes yes. that are already dead, That's unusual. Right. Nobody was born with him. Ain't nobody was born there. Ain't nobody was still with that. The Lord said, take another look. Yeah. Yeah. And when, when, when we're dealing with the Lord, and you know, just how he said, the way when he returns is very narrow. You know, a bunch of people, anytime. You see a bunch of people dealing with something, check that again. Yes. That's true. Check it again. That's true. And they always use this voice during election time. The voice of the people is the voice of God. I never believe that. No. I believe that when I voice what said, but not now. 
the brook had dried up. So when something happens, what do you do? The Lord gave him another word. The Lord says, because there had been no rain in the land, that dried up. So the word of the Lord came and told again in verse 8. He said, arise. Now you may go to Nassau after such a farming here. And then you look at something, you die in Nassau, you lose that job, they call you for house or the marriage. The farming came on the house. The farming came on the, on the marriage. So you're like, Lord, I'm going through so much. What do you want me to do now? But Lord say, do not stay there and die. Get up. Yeah, he leave me. Yeah, she leave me. Get up. That's not the end of the world. Move on with your life. Meaning that let God be your husband or your wife. Don't go on and mess up again. Move on with your life. If you fall down as a child of God, and you have so many leaders finish beat people down, but I'm not here to beat you today. Yes. If you fell down or fall down or lay down in the name of Jesus Christ, get up. Yes. Get up, get yes. up. The church needs more love and more people are backsliding. and you finish sliding them back. We need love. Do not stay there. Elijah did not stay to the brook when it dried up. He could have died there and said, that's it. No, get up. Arise. Find yourself moving. Arise, it's a doing thing, it's a verb, it's a time to move. Yes. Do not stay there. Right. So when he went back, the Lord says, go be to Zarephath. When I go to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Dwell there means to live there. Yeah. So why live there? He said, behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. There goes the command of the Lord again. Yes. Let me tell you something. Sometimes in your house, you got to command. Command in ordering and you bring it forth God's presence yes. over the situation. Yes. Sometimes we say, well, in the name of Jesus, or I think it may happen. Listen, command it. Call it forth. Or do you it? Assign it. Call it to what it needs to be. Amen. Amen. It says, I command a, a, a widow now to sustain you. Uh. Now, I laugh in my studies. A widow. Let me tell you, most widows I know, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna leave them now. And you have some widows that are wealthy. The husband had them set right up. The Lord used a widow. Back to what I said when I started. He don't use, why oh, he didn't use one more than one big time house? Oh, you will find a three story house. Ah, a widow. Even when Jesus was born in a stable, listen. He used low situations yeah. and then to let you know guys. He said, if you want to be great in the kingdom, but you want to be learning to serve. But too many of God's people want to be so high so quick. They want the wealth, they want the riches, they want the big time. No, 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 no. Humility. God wants a widow. Someone who has been gone. And don't have that much. Mm. It right here in the word. Yeah. It's nothing I made up. It says, I will command a widow to sustain you there. So he arose and went. And when he get to the gate, you know something, when the Lord really um, ministers to us, sometimes we have to wait to see the preceding word. But what baffled me, Pastor Ed, I read the story. Many times, and yeah, my husband picked on it, but there's always a revelation as we study. Yes. When Elijah went to the gate, he made the when he made the woman to the gate because sometimes when the Lord speaks to, to you, at least to me, sometimes I, I don't see it right away. He went and made it to the gate. He didn't have to go knocking on the door. Are you the widow? God tell me. Are you the widow? Are you the widow? God made it so easy. He met her at the gate. He didn't have to ask around, and I'm sure there were other widows in that city. But you have to know this the widow that got your blessing. Because every widow don't think alike. This widow wasn't like a regular widow. Because if I'm a widow, I ain't baking do nothing. I gotta keep that for me and my children. Yeah. Y'all should give to me. Don't come asking me for that. Come on now. <laughs> think about it. Your husband just there. People that come to your house and don't bring nothing and bring sympathy. Where does that come from? 
Some of you are supposed to be the middle. You still not in the middle. Yeah. The Lord tells you to move from where you are. You are You're stuck. It could be a job. It could be a decision. It could be prayer time. It could be meditation time. It could be another level in God. You are still at that rhythm place. You need to move from that rhythm and get to that middle posture. Amen. Because that's your next level. Yeah. Your next level may not be per se the middle, but your next level is somewhere else. Yeah. There is a higher lesson. There's a deeper calling. There's a longing for God in that next place. But you are so comfortable with the raven. You know, the raven talking, you come to the raven, the raven bringing you bread. You're comfortable with that water and that bread. You can't even see the middle. Mm -hmm. But there is another place in your life. Yes, God. Find your widow. My God. Get to the gate. Because she's waiting right there. Better than also. She's waiting right there on you. My because God. you got the word of life for her. Yes. You know what I mean? You all have the word of life for your cousin, your aunt, yes. your family. You like, yeah, but they so wicked. No. The king was wicked though. And Elijah told the king what's going to happen. You need to warn your people. Yeah. Amen. That a famine is coming. I don't know for no food in the supermarket. A famine is almost upon the land. People don't even want to hear the word of God. People don't want to sit and receive what is on no, no. People don't want to pray. No. Technology has occupied My 90 God. of the earth. They are not spending quality time with God. There is a famine for the word. The scriptures say that the end time is going to happen. Yes. It's upon us. So you need to move from that raven and tell those raven spirit by you go into look for your widow. Most widows I know, like I said earlier, they need help. They need help. God has a way to show us his provision. Verse 12 tells us, and the Lord thy God live it. I have not baked a cake, but a handful of the meal and the barrel. And then 13, Elijah said to her, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. There was a step in verse 13. Now we know we can look up our children, but I'm a mother. And if we speak the truth, she and the devil, we can be the little pickup. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know, I have two sons, one 28, one 17, I love both of them. Of course, in my natural mind and sense. Uh -huh. But in here, a prophetic word came over this widow. It says in the man of God first. For thus said the Lord of Israel. Sorry, verse 13 said, Elijah said to her, Go and do as thou hast said. But make me therefore a little kid first. Don't eat it. Don't give it to your son. Bring it to me. As I said. And then after, make for thee and for thy son. But some of us stop in the middle. We uh -huh. don't even get Say to the line. We yes. make it and we keep it. My God. My God. Yes. Now some things you all keep it don't belong to you all. Everything I'm talking about is not finances. Some things in your house, some things in your possession, some things in your pocketbook, it will not multiply because it don't belong to you. It has to be released to be multiplied. Yes. That's good. That's very it good. Will not multiply where it is sitting. A seed will never grow until it goes into the ground. It has to go in the ground. And when it gets into the ground, you know what happens? It must die for us. Yes. We must be dead to ourselves. Yes. As long as we are alive, we're not going to give, we're not going to do, we're not going to go. Yes. You got to talk that is yes. for spiritual things. Yes. yes. It has to be in you. Even as a pastor, to come every week, not just every Body. Yes. yes. It has to take a desire yes. from that spirit man. Amen. Sometimes it takes a suffering. Jesus. Hmm. And the pastor will come tell you everything he felt this week, everything he dealt with, because you will not be able to bear it. Hmm. But when Elijah said to her, bake me a little cake first. Now some of us, we've already baked our little cake. Hmm. But our little cake still in the oven. He said, make it, and then bring it to him. Ten verse. So take that, baby, you have that, and do what God is saying that you should do it. That's right. 
And let me tell you something. When you rent flat, you will have more enough for you and your children. You will have your children's children. I am still living on the third, as the third and fourth generation of my parents and my parents' parents who knew God. Amen. Because they baked the cake in the early 60s. It's now 2018 and I am still reaping Amen. the reward. Because my father was a pastor all my life. I want you. That's the truth, sis. Praise God. Praise so this woman whom Elijah spoke to, she was given to the land of God even for her son. Only for her son. Thank God. Even for so her. when you give of your time, your talent, your money, you are given for your grandchildren and your children. That's and their children. That's true. So when you see people's children doing well and behaving themselves, what a bit, you wonder what happened. Talk to the grandmother. Somebody was in Amen. Somebody was faithful to God. Amen. Somebody spoke to the life of those children. Someone took time and took them to Sunday school. I grew up in Sunday school. I know that I used to go to church 10 in the morning for Sunday school, 11 o'clock morning worship, 4 o'clock is Sunday school in the afternoon, 7 o'clock is night worship. Yeah. Same clothes I had on all morning and still wasn't very dirty on what I didn't know. It's what you come to church yes. for. Yes. That's that true. did the nine of us good. Amen. 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 Now we thought I was going to church too much, and our school friends teasing us all going too much. All of us go to church and school and home and try and go to church school and home. When I go home to Nassau and I look for them, oh. can't find something. My God. That's right. So today I will speak to mothers and grandmothers in here today. So your seed like this woman at the gate. Bake a little cake. Always think the future of your children. Yes. The seed you sow will come back to you. Oh, yes. That's a good word. When you feed the man of God or woman of God, you are feeding nations. Yeah. Because you are sowing seed that will return back to your children and your children's children. Yes. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. Your son and your daughter may not be able to live in a wealthy house. Their lives are uh, they're walking together, they know God, there's healing in their bodies, there's deliverance, they have a sound mind, they serve God. Everyone does not come to earth to be rich, but everyone has come to earth in God to be wealthy. Yes. yes. There is a difference between riches and wealth. Yes. Amen. The wealth of God comes your spiritual life, yes. your going, what you're coming in your line and you're getting up, what you speak, everything you touch. Yes. Riches depends. On status depends on who is your family and who you come from. Desire the wealth of God. Because that is what this woman at the gate desired the wealth of God. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, the borrow. He said to her, After she feed him, you know what she said to him? In other words, being meant to say that the old people tell you, you will never go hungry. Your cup will always be full. Yes. Your cup will always be full. Oh, yes. Because you are a blessed woman. So as I wrap up today, I want to let you know that if you are at your raven stage, you need to get to the gate. Because after Elijah blessed that woman, let me tell you something. The rest of that story talks about how that woman, when you go home, read 1 Kings 17, the whole chapter. After a while, do you know what happened? That woman never went poor, empty, nor dry. Because she met someone. You just need to meet one person in yes. your life, and your life will not be the same. Amen. God. A true man of God, a mentor in your life, and your life will not be the same. People will ask you who you hang with, who you spend time with, because all I can see in your life is success. Yes. But you have to bake the Lord cake first. Amen. That woman never ever need for nothing. Even you talk about family even in the body. Let me tell you something. In that scripture, the woman's son died. You all ever read that? Those who never read first Kings yes. read it. The woman's son died, you know what she said? This man come in my house to kill my son. Because you know, we, we, we take it from the natural man. She ain't thinking he's no man of God no more. You come here and cause my son to die. He lied to just be like, he said, bear is he. Bear is he. See, we don't have to rile up and carry on. Then we have the anointing. We got a bunch of people behind us, and we got a bunch of oil. We got a no, you didn't know what I mean, people inside the voice of God. Yes. Elijah asked, where's the child? 
She said, oh, the child is in the same room. Must be where you were sleeping. Ah. So she said, what? And God said, the Lord God of Israel. And she went and did a point as a slave of Elijah in her house. And the bar was never empty. So when we look at verse 20, it says, And he cried unto the Lord, O Lord, thou hast also brought evil. That's what she said. The man of God bring evil to her. <laughs> By slaying her son. You know, something when you frustrated and you actually your husband and dad, sometimes you need to be bringing all evil. Because she's a woman of God. Her husband just dead. And she said, He come now. He wants something there. She's hurting. So when we are hurting and going to farm it, Yes, who says that? Who let her body tell you, you? And now, the thing of wife tell you, tell Christ God and die. Listen, do obey the thing. Do obey. Be quiet. If you have to cry, just go before the Lord and cry. When people call you on the phone, girl, I hear you got fired, do not answer them. Just say, I'm in prayer. Hang on. Oh, I heard you resign. Oh, I heard you fire. I heard you walk off the job. No, 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 no. I am in prayer before the Lord. Because let me hang up before I miss it, say something I shouldn't say. When you are grieving, let me tell you something. Or when you are in pain, or some pain can be in your body, or a spouse or a child, you say things you don't mean. That's why we call people back and we apologize. This woman was in pain. She said, The man of God caused her son to die. And that man of God did grow up because he could have told all kinds of things. You know what he did? Verse 21 says, And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord. And pray thee that this child's soul come to him again. Because the whole neighborhood would say, This man of God is going to cause us on the dice. And maybe the single killer was going you know, we run on the things God will tell us. The whole neighborhood would have had all kinds of things to say about the man of God. They have been evil on the man of God without knowing how things go. So they could have said, The whole neighborhood, this man is in our house, and now my son is dead. Yeah, that's true. And then it made the man of God look like he is a murderer. And in the natural, they come to the house, take a topsy, whatever. But the man of God, God favored him, and laid over that child. Thank and he God. said three times, and the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came unto him again. Right. And he was revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down of the chambers unto the house, and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See thy son live. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art man of God. And that the word of the Lord is in the mouth. Amen. Amen. You gotta be living something for people that say you are a man of God or woman of God. They gotta prove something yes. that God has done in your life or God has said today. So today, I want to entreat you to know that God is concerned about your body, God is concerned about your soul, and of course your spirit is intact because it's always rejoicing. But today, you may be at your raven or you may be at the village. Or you may be at a place where everything seems to be dead like the boy was. But take note, before Elijah left that house, everything came alive. Yes. So today, you might have come here like a raven, like a widow. Even then, because situation and circumstances, everybody turned you down. But today, I come with good news that God is with you. So God is with this people. And I want to encourage Pastor today to know that God is with you, man. God is with you. Even though people are saying, oh, the church going down, that's the building, man. Amen. <laughs> that's the building. Amen. That's the building. The Lord Amen. wants to encourage you all today to know that he is with you with this work. When they want to hear it, pastor, when they don't want to hear it, be faithful continuously with the people. Amen. May they keep the people together. Amen. Keep their mind focused on God. The vision God has given you to give them. Be faithful to that. Yes. Because the symbolic and the Tobias, they don't come off the wall, you know. It's us who come down sometimes. They don't come down. So today, I want to encourage you, if it were, to know that God is with you. Amen. The God of Jacob is your refuge. Yes. And we shall break the past every word that's spoken in your life. Amen. Because of your faithfulness. If you had not been faithful, if your life was not how it was as a young man, this boy would have been finished a long time. But because what God has placed in you, which is a candle that only God can have, but it is still burning, it encourages you every week to come and to keep the people of God before him. So God has called you way back. And little that you knew these days would come. 
that you are walking in now. Yes. And it's only God's grace, I hear you saying, and his mercy that is extended to you. For God says, I've given you strength for the joining. Amen. Just continue to lean on me, to trust on me. God said to trust in me. Because he said, the way how he's going to move with that building, as far are you thinking? <laughs> I know you think you're getting the money from Pastor Eddie. God said, even they ain't coming from there. Wow. You will testify and say, I never thought it was going to happen like this. My Lord. So this message this morning is heading towards what God is planning Amen. to do. Amen. Your raven is never the raven you think is coming. That's right. Never look at the outward God saying, because I'm working on the heart. Yes. And I see your desire to where you say, God, I want to put these people to a place of rest. Yes. And God says, I heard that prayer. And I will honor every word. Every word. Not that will fall to the ground. Okay? Amen. So God says to stand and having your mouth to stand. He said to still stand. Having your loins good about the truth. And the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shone. He said, do not look at the natural. And do not look at numbers. I've given you a faithful crew, says God. Amen. A faithful crew. God says, I've given you, continue to be faithful yes. with the faithful crew. Amen. And I will add, because the vision, others have to see it to be able to be a part. Yeah. So God says, I will add, and I will establish everything in this place. I will provide whatever is needed. Whatever is needed, God said, already provided it. Yeah. So he said, stand still. Amen. Teach them the word of God. Amen. Once you teach them the word of God, he said, they will be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. Yes. And they will not depart. Thank you. Yes. They will not depart. They will not depart. God said, I've given you a faithful crew. Yes. faithful crew I've given you. Yes. And I am watching over them. I am watching over them, says God. I am watching over them. So continue to be faithful. Yes. Continue to be faithful. Because 2019, God is going to bring some things that are shifted. He's going to bring it up and it's a line. And it's a line. It's a line. God is doing a special work in you, Pastor Eddie, in the community. A special anointing he's going to put on you for 2019 because there's some, some community work that he's going to help you to do. And you're going to go into some areas where nobody ever, in other words, I hear the Spirit say, hey, drag going. Yeah. But God's I will anoint you to go in. Mm-hmm. I will give you favor to knock on the door. And they will answer. I command them, they will answer. Amen. Just how I command the raven, I will command them. Amen. Amen. I will command them. I hear you telling the Lord they just, they just play and they're busy, they're busy all the time. So, I hear you saying, God, they're busy. God said, I will unbusy them. <laughs> I will unbusy them. And I will command their air to hear what is coming out of your mouth. Because of the concern you have for the people. Maybe misunderstood and misjudged, but God said, Your assignment is what matters with me, and your obedience is key. Once you be obedient, the blessing of the Lord will follow. So 2019, some of the doors you have knocked on in 2018, God said, knock again. Yes. I'm establishing and I'm bringing order. Yes. God said, I will do it. So let's give God thanks today.
God has truly never left me. Yes. I'm still here because of the grace and goodness and favor of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. For he is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, after that strong word, hallelujah, we're going to take up a second offering. Come on now, let's not get, you know, little low now. We just heard that great word from the Lord that God is our provider and he's giving us favor. Come on, let's go. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to now hear from our birthday girl. Even as we're taking up offering, we're going to pull up the offering that the second offering that we're taking up is for Pastor Margo. Come on, deep, 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 um, deep. Show us and show Pastor Margo the love that you have for her. So dig real deep. Have we all given? Or, or we need some more time so you can get a little deeper in those pockets. You may, you may want to go to the second or third pocket because. We know how to mend them though. They got three and four pockets. Some of them pockets you can't even see. Some of them just go, man, you all gotta go in those socks, go in those socks, go in the socks. You know, sometimes you keep them hidden in the socks. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are we, are we collected all? Sure, as I go out one more time. Praise the Lord. I'm going to call Pastor Eddie. I'm going to call our Pastor, Pastor Eddie Victor, just to say a special prayer over this. And then we're going to call Pastor Margo to come and give her response. Amen. Um, let's just pray. Father, we just thank you for all that has given here today. We thank you, God, for those that have sown into the life of Pastor Margo. We pray a special multiplication upon them. Your word already declares that as we give, you will multiply. But in this instance, Lord, I ask so, God, that you would cause a speedy manifestation of your multiplication upon every life here today. Lord, let, let there be a tangible manifestation that many will say, look and see what God has done. And Lord, as you multiply back to them, Lord, we are not just speaking that which is financial, but we are speaking health, prosperity, peace of mind, oh God. We, we are we declaring that we'll be well with them in every area of their life. So that, Lord, that their whole life in its totality will be a testimony of what the Lord has done. We give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
Praise the Lord. Now we're coming down to the end of our service, and we will call Sister Doreen Edwards to come and close us out in prayer. And after Sister Doreen closes out in prayer, we'll just hear back from Pastor Eddie just to give a blessing over us and dismiss us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just give you thanks, Lord. We just give you praise. We just give you the glory. And we give you the honor. Father, as we come before you, God, we thank you for the word today, God. We thank you for your maid servant, oh God, who delivered your word so powerful, oh God. And Father, we pray that as we take this word, oh God, we will walk in your word, Father God. We will apply your word, oh God. And that as we leave this place, Father God, but not from your present God, that you go before us, oh God. As we ask his mercies, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Happy birthday, Pastor Lago. Thank you. The Lord bless you. May the Lord blessing overtake you. And may the Lord's blessing manifest in your house and in every, within every family member's lives. The Lord go with you and bless the words of your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And I really want to say thank you. It's so good to see Minister Angela Jones. And her husband and her family here visiting with us. And we really appreciate you. And Sister Veronica, these are friends in all the way back from Calvary Temple time. Thank you so much. Amen. And our friend Bonnie and her son, thank you for being here. We really appreciate you. Amen. Amen.